We thought it might be worthwhile to have a standalone session in this program to particularly have a look at the concept of risk. And we did that because a lot of our participants did ask for um, clarifications in terms of application of risk, its definition, and obviously what happens in, in business when that, those applications or those definitions are um, tra translated across to commercial concepts. So let's have a look at what risk is. Again, we are drawing on a lot of existing established literature where in the book are uh, referenced, but in the interest of fluidity of this material, we will not uh, stop and uh, start referencing. Our contribution is into synthesizing and bringing these concepts, well-established concepts together. So let's have a look at risk. It's an interesting concept because it does apply not only into our commercial activities, but also to our day-to-day -day life. Risk, let's say, is a concept that identifies probability, possibility of a set of different alternatives and outcomes compared to our desired outcome with respect to a context. Risk is an entity, a concept that it transmits the probability that we might get something different to what we expected. Now there is a great deal of philosophical, spiritual, and other types of uh, uh, valid thought processes with respect to risk that say your desired outcome is fictitious. What was going to happen is going to happen. Flow with life, you know, uh, we, we stay away from that. But let's just bring it back into a more of a mechanical, methodological, and practical application. It's not necessarily right, but we're going to stick with that. So we've got risk. Something we wanted to happen, what happens if it doesn't happen? Most people are identify risk with a downside risk. What if I get a suboptimal outcome with respect to my desired outcome below? The fact is, this kind of undershooting is as just much of a risk as you were overshooting. If you continuously, continually have a desired outcome and you're overshooting with respect to it, it's just as much of a going risk in your process as you were undershooting. In fact, a lot of methodologies such as TQM, Six Sigma, if they've got a trend of overshooting, they identify risk situation as much as if you were undershooting. The first thing with risk we need to recognize is its definition, which means that a, an outcome not commensurate with what we desire. Second thing is, if a trend of overshooting, which means that getting more than we need continually, is just as much of a risk position as we are having undershooting. In this diagram will see that if you've got an undershoot and overshoot, with most of the phenomena we deal with, you cannot correct it in one step. It actually oscillates towards steady state. So when the risk situation occurs, the remedial action, the risk management tactics, often should be set or required to bring back the position in an oscillatory position into a steady state. That's the other thing we need to recognize, that managing risk is not a one-shot exercise. It is a oscillatory exercise. Now, let's borrow some concepts from the finance uh, literature. Risk could be, in finance literature anyway, which is very useful in practical examples, can be divided into two types, systematic non-diversifiable risk, non-systematic diversifiable risk. The risk that you can actually diversify, and you need to diversify in finance industry because you will not get return on your assets if you do not diversify a diversifiable risk. Diversifiable risk. Systematic risk is the risk 
that's not non-diversifiable, and you, with the lack of better terminology, you're stuck with it. You can't get out of the house in the morning and say, I am risk-free. There are elements within your system which are embedded and they're systematic and not diversifiable. Those elements you need to factor into your return on the resources that you applied in your activity. In a business concept, you need to have commensurate return on your capital and the resources you applied to compensate you for systematic, non-diversifiable risk. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the finance theory, that's often used within the elements of return on equity through methods, models such as capital asset pricing model, CAPM, where the beta and the return on the capital is required higher for the equity providers to compensate them for the risk that they have taken that is not diversifiable, it's systematic, and it goes into weighted average cost of capital, and that's the finance theory methodology of dealing with systematic risk, the risk that's not diversifiable. Then there's risk that is diversifiable. You can diversify, you can manage. But in terms of your um, dealing with systematic versus non-systematic risk in a strategic business planning concept, there's nothing wrong with saying, I do not understand it. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know whether it's systematic or not systematic. That's a better approach than having a slogan-based methodology in dealing with risk. So, risk can be upside trending or downside trending. Risk can be systematic, which means we have to get the return for it in terms of our uh, return on our, our, our activities or resources that are allocated, or non-systematic, which means we can diversify. Well, how do we know something is systematic or non-systematic here? How do we know we're stuck with it or we can do something about it? There's a methodology that is well covered in the literature, and uh, it's called um, VUCA, or sometimes people call it VCUA, VUCA. Volatility, Uncertainty, Complexity, Ambiguity. It was done by the American US military, with some of the scholars who actually consulted and worked for the military. It's one of the best methodologies around. And he says if these four components are assessed, then it shows the degree of the risk. Very quickly, for the purpose of this exercise, I would like to familiarize you with these, and then you can have a look at further um, studies if you're interested. Volatility of a concept you're dealing with is how this concept moves up and down as soon as you touch it. It's very volatile. It's like a storm in the tropics. So this degree of volatility is inherently very volatile. You're dealing with explosive material, it's very volatile. Second concept is you, uncertainty. What does that mean? It means that within our bounded rationality, within our concepts that we are capable of doing, within our stage of development as a species, we are not able to understand the next period. Remember in strategy we said different periods? That the conditions that will prevail the next period is uncertain. We don't know whether next month or next week is it going to rain when it's not going to rain, with a degree of certainty, we're uncertain. So, volatility, uncertainty, inability to actually fully predict and be comfortable about the state of the play in future periods. The next comes after that is C, complexity, which means you might, it might not be volatile. We might be pretty sure about the conditions of what's going to happen in terms of certainty. However, it is very complex. And it's quite a common exercise within, uh, there's a lot of work in economics theory that shows, uh, and in uh, psychology, that shows that the complex situation, the, the, the context is just far too complex. It's hard for us to fully recognize it and encapsulate it. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity. Now, maybe it's not volatile that much. Maybe we can understand the uncertain situation. 
maybe it's not very complex. Then it comes A, ambiguity, which means we don't know what is causing what in this thing. In fact, causal ambiguity in, in business economics is a concept that underlines competitive advantage or sustainability of competitive advantage because competitive advantage is causally ambiguous. People don't know how they did it. We've got a methodology that I covered or we cover at a later stage that shows that you know, flow variables, ga uh, coordination games, intuitive thinking, cause cooperative games, stock variables, rigorous, and there's some elements of ability to recognize the ambiguity. But generally, ambiguous, am ambiguous situation, ambiguity, are responsible also uh, for degree of risk. So if a risk situation, a risky situation, has a lot of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, V, U, C, A, it can actually shift you from a systematic to a non-systematic, which means you're stuck with this risk. You can't do anything with it. You have to get a return for entering into it. Or to a non-systematic, because V, U, I, C is lower, to a non-systematic, you can do something with it. In any case, it is fair, it is acceptable, in fact, it is more practical and it's more respectable to say at times, we don't know the degree of risk and we don't know what to do with it. I've seen many, and you have seen the same thing in many strategic business plans and activities that people just carry on. So, uh, carry on about what they can do about a, business, a risk which is really something that they don't know. Let me just en encapsulate what we said because it's uh, what we said because it's a concept that's quite comprehensive. Risk, it can overshoot and trend or undershoot. Essentially, it's a situation, a context, a situation or context, context that means that we're not getting our desired outcome. It can be systematic, non-diversifiable, uh, non or non-systematic, diversifiable. We can do something about it. How do we know about this? One method is. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity of the context. The other thing with the risk analysis is two-dimensional thing. The degree of its severity, if it happens, let's say, against the column of possibility of it. If you've got a risk, risky situation that has got detrimental, catastrophic possibility on our business or activities and is very likely to happen, well, that requires significant attention. And in our business planning situation, we'll say how we create a significant step change program to deal with it. If, by contrast, it's a situation where the degree of uh, impact is low and the li likelihood of the risk happening is very low, where we're not going to allocate resources to it. So please have an approach to risk to say what it is and it's not necessarily because I'm worried about it. It could be something that is overshooting. It takes me a long time to fix up the oscillations into a steady state. It could be systematic, non-systematic, based on the measures that I described before, VUCA. And think about the dimension of catastrophic or degree of impact and possibility of occurrence.